I think it makes a whole lot of sense to talk about position sizing. So if you're ever out there thinking about building a portfolio and you're wondering how much money should I allocate towards this stock or another stock, well, this video is for you because I'm going to be going over something that blew my mind many years ago when I learned about the average true range and how that'll help you with position sizing. Hey, I'm Luke Downey. Here's another edition of Lessons with Luke. I just want to make you the best investor possible. So if you like this content, make sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. So let's rewind the tape a little bit. I wanted to be the best investor in the world. I knew that there was about 10, 15, 20 stocks I wanted in my portfolio. I just didn't know how much money I wanted to allocate to each. And so that's what we're going to be covering today because years ago, I stumbled upon something super cool called the average true range, which basically is another word for measuring volatility and how that can really help you with position sizing. So before we get into this, there's two things I want you to really think about. Number one is that all assets, they behave differently. So an easy way to think about that is say cryptocurrencies, they are a little bit more volatile than say growth stocks and maybe growth stocks are more volatile than say dividend stocks, right? In general. So the point is you have to understand that every asset has its own behavior, okay? Then number two is you need to understand volatility. And that's just a real ugly word for understand how an asset trades in the past to understand how it's going to likely trade in the future. And to do that, we're going to be looking at the average true range. So let's go ahead and get into it. So what is the range? So the range of a stock is today's high minus the low, right? So the easiest way to think about that is a hundred dollar stock is the high say the low is 95, then the range for that day, intraday range is $5. But the true range, which was pioneered by a guy named J. Wells Wilder Jr. He was an old commodities guy. He basically said, wait a minute, we need to also incorporate yesterday's close. And why do we want to do that? We need to do that because you know, when a stock closes each day, it opens at a different level. It doesn't necessarily open where it closes. And so all of that needs to be incorporated in the true daily range of a stock. So to calculate the true range, you're going to take the maximum of today's high versus yesterday's close minus the minimum of today's low minus yesterday's close. So this is going to give you a better idea of how a stock's real range, the true range, of how it behaves on a day-to-day -day basis. So let's look at this in practice. So we're gonna look at a couple of examples. I've got three stocks that we're gonna be looking at today. A very volatile stock, which is Tesla. Uh, a, a less volatile stock, which is Apple. And then an even less volatile stock, which is a big dividend stock, Altria, MO. Um, and we're gonna be looking at how they behave. And so I'm looking at, this is February of 2020, all the way to July of 2021. So almost a year and a half of open, high, low, close data. So this is historical data you can get from anywhere. And what I have here is I'm just calculating the true range of the stock. And then if you look at that at a percentage basis, what we can see is that MO, right, Altria, it moves a couple of percent a day, the true range. And if you look at a year and a half, basically, it moves about 2.7% a day. Okay. That's not that volatile. Okay. Now, what I like to do to take that true range is move it to a 25 day moving average, or maybe a 30 day moving average, or maybe a 15 day moving average. That way it kind of lets you know, it kind of smooths out some of that daily range. Like what can you expect MO to be doing? And so if you look at a 25 day, ATR on average, it's right around the 2.7 range, but in times where volatility is low, it's moving around say 2% a day. When volatility is high, right? Like during the pandemic low, it's moving around say almost 8% a day. Okay. So on a thousand dollar investment, it's moving around on a low volatility day, call it 20 bucks, high volatility. It's moving around say 77 bucks. Let's go ahead and compare that to say Apple, where the 25 day ATR over a year and a half is just over 3%, 3.08. So it's a little bit more volatile. 
How much money is it moving around on your thousand dollars? About 31 bucks. It's a little bit more than say Austria, but look at Tesla, something that moves around. So you put that same thousand dollars, it's daily average movement, right? So the 25 day ATR over a year and a half is $62. So basically it's more than double volatile compared to say Altria, right? So a thousand dollar investment. So you can put more than a thousand dollars into Altria, uh, way more before it's going to have the same type of daily movements in terms of dollar P and L than say what Tesla is. Or another way to think about it is like maybe your portfolio, you put a thousand dollars into Altria and to get the same type of dollar movement, right? The same type of dollar risk for that thousand dollars of Tesla, you might only have to say, put $400 into Tesla. That's how volatile it is. And so that's what is so critical to position sizing. You really have to understand how the stock behaves. And so when I got to New York and I started day trading, I was at this big shop, they had this matrix look similar to this. And basically what they taught us was your high vol stocks, so stocks that are very volatile, your Teslas, Google at the time years ago used to be crazy volatile. Now it's like a utility. It doesn't move as much, but we were only allowed to allocate say 10% of our money to those types of stocks because they moved around so much. The drawdowns were so nasty, right? So we put less money in the high volatile stocks, but like the big cap, low volatile, high dividend stocks, we were able to allocate a lot more money. So like the Altrias or maybe the Exxon Mobiles, uh, maybe the IBMs, right? These are the stocks that don't move around, right? So when it comes to volatility, you know, your lower vol stocks, you can allocate more money to them because the drawdowns in theory should be a lot less than say like a Tesla. So hopefully this helps you think about position sizing. Don't think about the dollar amount. Think about the volatility of the asset class. And then that'll really help you understand how it's probably going to move in the future. Hopefully this helps you with your position sizing and I'll see you next week.